Just one more comment about the theological issue, because I keep on saying that there's no such thing as theology. You might say, what about this notion about man, here used generically to include women, that man is made in the image of God. Uh, well, it's a Hebraic idea, and it's carried over in Christianity, uh, and it is carried over in Islam in some sense too. It has very, very important ideological consequences because it implies that secular, the secular humanist view of human nature is fundamentally wrong because we all have an innate uh, or inborn or congenital knowledge of God. And that's a view that seems ideological because people say, well, what's the evidence for that? What's the evidence for saying that human beings are all endowed with the knowledge of God from birth? And there are complex arguments for that, which I'll survey briefly. But the idea that some part of God himself is infused or breathed into the human creature is a Quranic one, as well as being uh, similar to the Jewish one. Not quite the same as the image of God. That's a complex notion, in fact, because I'm not sure what, what the word image means here. I mean, the image of, a, in, in the case of a secular reality, like a lamp, for example, casting an image, the image has a reality of its own as well as a parasitic reality, meaning if you remove the object of which it is an image, then the image is no longer there. I don't think that's quite true with human nature because it's evident that human nature, as we know from the musings of existentialists and secular humanists, seems to have some independent existence. So it's, not, it's entirely possible to understand human nature, it seems, without reference to God. At least on the surface, that seems to be the case. Maybe at a deep level, conceptual analysis apart, maybe it's not. So I don't want to beg the question, as we philosophers say, meaning assume the truth of something I'm trying to prove. I think it's entirely possible that one could have a perfectly coherent, uh, conceptually coherent conception of human nature without a reference to God. In other words, the burden of proof is upon believers in one God or more than one God, in this day and age certainly, to show in what sense uh, God informs the human creature. In other words, in what sense is our humanity dependent upon some divine component within the human creature? I don't think it's self-evident. I think it was self-evident uh, in a cultural sense in ages past. Certainly um, in the Christian West up to maybe 200 years ago, 300 years ago, and in the Islamic world even today. It's um, unthinkable for someone to think that human nature doesn't have that divine component. But since we are talking in the context of Western secular modernism, which in a sense is the ubiquitous condition of mankind. I mean, you go west wherever you go, right? There's no such thing as the east, incidentally. And that's even true on an aeroplane, because wherever you go, you can speak English, people will understand you. So both culturally and theologically, or if you'd like, in a Christian sense, messianically, the messianic message of Paul is global in a way, is everywhere. Wherever you go, there's a certain vocabulary, the modern vocabulary of talking. In fact, to up to the extent that somebody, someone might even say, if he was being disparaging, that um, secular humanism is the latest denomination of Protestantism. 